and welcome back. So glad you're streaming with us here on ABC News Live. Our coverage of Hurricane Ian continues. And of course, uh, one of the best people to bring in to discuss a dangerous storm like this. He's an expert on disaster preparedness. He is the commander of Joint Task Force Katrina, an operation that of course led to organized relief efforts along the Gulf Coast in the aftermath of that devastating hurricane in 2005, which basically wiped out New Orleans. General Russell Honoré joining us now live from his home there in Baton Rouge. Good to see you, General. I guess we all sort of knew that we'd be uh, having this type of conversation again, didn't we? Mm. Uh, we feared it. Uh, the good news is Florida took a lot of lessons from Katrina and Andrew and really got their citizens prepared. But you know, Kara, uh, you can be prepared, uh, but the first half of this fight with a Category 4, you lose. And we see the impact of that with the surge water and the over 100 mile an hour wind. And we know what that's going to create. The grid's going to go down and people are going to be flooded in their homes. But the state and the federal government have done a good job preparing but you never can overmatch a Category 4 storm. The storm always wins in terms of destruction, and we just hope and pray for maximum survival and nobody lose their lives. Amen. General, uh, the hurricane has just made landfall, according to the National Hurricane Center, and I just wonder, looking ahead now, how to, what is your advice to people as it rolls through and in its immediate aftermath? How do people stay safe? Stay in the survival mode. Uh, go to the interior rooms, check on your neighbors, uh, use your phone sparingly, only on text. Don't drive your battery down, turn all your apps off, because you could be a week or two without power. Uh, the fact that you're in the storm and you've survived it, uh, reduce all your uh, power requirements on your things to keep you digitally connected, and hope the cell towers stay up. Because in a 115 mile an hour wind, as we saw last year, in Louisiana and Hurricane Ida, the cell towers will come down and it will take a couple days to get them back up, Kara. You know, just looking back at Katrina and, and just what a cluster that was. I mean, from Mayor Nagan in New Orleans all the way to the top, there was so much disorganization. Uh, Northern Command got you involved. We will never forget, Terry and I were talking about that day. You rolled in with all those tanks and you were telling people to get their guns down. I mean, it was the Wild West. Nobody was prepared. Nobody did the right thing. And we saw what happened. Looking at what's going on right now, as you look at state officials, federal officials, these agencies, and how we've been talking about and preparing for this for days, have you seen progress? And if so, point out to where you have been the most impressed as we get ready now that it has made landfall and it is all systems go. Yeah, big improvements uh, on the communications from the federal government and the state in warning people the Weather Service have done a better job uh, of the prediction and the warnings. And the communications down at the mayoral level and the county level are uh, giving people warnings, the use of uh, social media and apps to keep people informed. A major, major improvement, uh, Kara, from what we saw in Katrina. And technology has brought us a long way in being able to get information to all homes. The concentration of people under this storm, though, is something we had not seen before. We saw a little glimpse of it in Sandy up on the East Coast. But the concentration of 25 million people under storm watch or storm warning, I don't think we've seen this in modern history. And this could be a history maker. I hope it's not. I hope when it comes ashore as a Category 4, it dissipate and go to a Category 1 within the first few hours, but with that warm water and the impact of climate on it, it could go into uh, coastal Florida up to 100 miles as a Category 2, as we saw last year with Ida, Kara. And, and General, that, that figure you just said, 25 million people potentially in the path of this thing. And afterwards, that's going to have to be a task for the federal government. No state government can handle that much disaster over that many or many people's lives so what are you expecting what should the federal government be doing now and and what should it get ready to do as as this storm passes they need to be emptying the motor pools and the uh, warehouses around 
America and moving it toward Florida. Right now, much of FEMA back up MREs in Alabama. Uh, that could be a challenge to even get there. They need to activate most of the United States military cargo planes, as well as helicopters and ships to stop moving stuff in there. Ships is one of the most effective way to move big tonnage, but that is gonna take two to three days and people are gonna be on their own. But moving that stuff out of Alabama to back up, and they only have four million MREs and 25 million people, uh, that is gonna be a challenge to get that distributed where they need it. The good news, most of these families will be able to survive for the first couple of three days on what they have in house. After that, that's gonna be a challenge depending on how much of Florida remain flooded and when you can get through to the roads. The coastal areas will drain out, Kerry. As you remember in South Louisiana, that will not be the case in some of the interior of Florida where that water is gonna get trapped and it's gonna take a while to go back out to the ocean. Great point. General Russell Honore, thanks very much. The Category 5 general you were dubbed and we thank you for helping us out on this huge Category 4 storm. Thanks very much. Great to see you. God bless Florida. God bless America. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.